So thank you all for coming here. So uh, in this talk, we are going to present a proposal about how we can address the problem of uh, full encryption for micro -S. And before doing that, we are going to review uh, other approaches, uh, approaches that we had uh, for different products and what other people are doing outside and what other uh, uh, communities are working on that problem. So uh, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's really complicated to have a good expectation for full disencryption. Sometimes for me, it's very easy to mix uh, uh, something that is a fair goal for disencryption and something that is completely, completely uh, 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 not related with disencryption, but we some, somehow expect that this is going to, to be addressed simply because we have a encrypted this available in our system. So for doing that, I think that we need to set uh, uh, a minimum set of goals that uh, I think that are kind of fair to, to expect from, from a solution. So basically the, the goal of having this encryption or full disencryption is to protect certain data uh, of our device in case of several things. I think that one expected uh, issue that can happen is that the storage, the, the David device storage is a loss of stolen. So I mean, when I say the device storage, I mean the, the real hard disk, no? So if in the case of a server, for example, maybe someone enter the farm, the, 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 the farm servers and remove one of the hard disk or uh, the, 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 the process that is disposing the hard disk is wrong and, and put some valuable data outside that someone can, can read and analyze. But I think also that in case that the full device is stolen, or lost is something that we need to require for a full disencryption uh, solution. We are talking about the laptop case. No, I have a laptop and I forget that in the bus, in the train, I will expect that full disencryption is going to help me to protect the privacy of the data that is stored there. Beside that, I think that is kind of fair, and this is where I can be wrong, that uh, uh, we should require for the full disencryption solution that we have in our system something about offline data tampering. For example, in the cloud, it's very easy to uh, connect to the KUKO device and make change. Uh, maybe it's easy to enter in a farm that is not very properly secure and, 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 and take one copy of the disk uh, in certain moment of time and go back and rewrite the bootloader and the kernel and do a rollback in expectation that when a CBI in this version of the kernel has been found, I can uh, undo the rollback or, or do the rollback again and exploit this, uh, this uh, 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 security vulnerability that is in the kernel. So this is the kind of uh, expectation that we can, we, can, we can set. But I think that there are very clear elements that are not called for, for full disencryption. In case that there is a local or remote exploit, this is, should be considered game over. So uh, somehow we have a zero day in our system, someone enter VSSH or, or uh, uh, directly in the system make a local change and this is over. So they, we, can, we need to consider that the secret has been leaked and the key certificates or the data that we consider a secret is not a secret anymore. And of course, a, 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 any kind of full protection against any kind of unauthorized access. So full disencryption is not going to help us or we can expect that it's going to help us. But for that, there are other tools. For example, for the, we have the embedded in case that we, our system is completely uh, image based. Uh, we can uh, be sure that the embedded is going to help us to be sure that the system is not going to be altered in any way. Uh, if we want to attestate the binaries that we are executing, we have in IBM and also remote attestation can help in certain situations. So, now it's time to see what others are doing. No? So what kind of reference implementation are uh, out there? So for Microsoft Windows, it's very well known that BitLocker is the, the reference implementation for that. Uh, BitLocker is not perfect, uh, but it's assumed, it's using the TPM for that. And uh, even though there are some drawbacks, for example, they documented that the, the uh, uh, TPM ceiling is going to be disabled during certain kind of updates. So it's kind of unprotected during certain situation. It's already good enough to provide value to the user. In the case of macOS, there is this file vault. Um, I don't know much about this solution, but I read that they are using also TPM or some kind of TPM alike that is available for ARM devices. Uh, but anyways, the documentation about how to install that is very, very easy to follow and people are expected to use an enterprise environment. And this is a reference implementation for macOS. Uh, 
And for Linux, we have nothing. So uh, we have no reference implementation. We don't have any standard. We don't, we don't have any architecture that we can uh, apply in our systems. Um, and this is something bad. I mean, this is something bad. There is a really good advantage of having a reference implementation or some standard uh, for, for Linux. We can ignore that, but if we have that, we are going to have more developer watching and developing and improving, making new features, but better support is going to be live and active for longer time. So this is a real advantage. For, it's less work for us, basically. It's going to be reviewed by security expert. For me, I, mean, I, I, I am not a security guy. So that means that uh, the most obvious hole in the system is going to be, I'm going to be blind for that. So I really don't see that. So one need to point me, okay, Alberto, this is the hole. So you forget about this case. So people that are uh, used to, to, to have a full view of the different security threats, can help a lot evaluating this uh, uh, reference implementation. And also, uh, if everything goes okay, there is going to be like a general architecture, like some kind of template that you can take with certain guarantees and apply in your product. I mean, uh, the, 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 the variety of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Linux distribution is huge. So uh, we have things like uh, uh, Ubuntu Core, that is basically a set of snaps together, including the kernel running MITRD. We have MicroS, that is leveraging battery phase to create a snapshot. We have more classic uh, uh, distributions. So it's a really complicated ecosystem, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, situation that a Linux distribution is going to find. So if we have some kind of template that we can apply when it makes sense, this is going to be a massive advantage for us. And I want to mention, I mean, it was in the news like two or three weeks ago, that are currently today initiatives, uh, in that case, under the systemd umbrella. Uh, in the, for, for this case, uh, it's a, a bit more broad because it's uh, addressing the problem of Linux image-based distribution, but where full encryption is one key component there. So there is uh, people in the community, in different companies and in different open source projects trying to address this situation in a standard and canonical way. Um, but actually, I kind of lie. I mean, I, this not, there is not a standard, but I think eventually it's collapsing in two different models, one based on Grab in the Grand Unified Bootloader, and the other one collapsing in SystemD. I think both are uh, uh, fairly used. I mean, it's not true. I mean, Grab is much more, much more used uh, for this full disencryption than SystemD today. But I think that there is going to be uh, an inflection point very soon enough where this thing, if everything goes OK, is going to change. Uh, they are kind of different. They have different approaches, different tool set. For example, uh, because group is a bootloader, uh, they are going to leverage or they are going to, to, to attack the program much more early in the boot process. They have this crypto mount extension and so and other distribution have extension on this uh, in this crypto mount command that basically what is going to do is to open the the looks device or the uh, dm crypt device provide the password and access to the to the kernel and the init id and continue for the booting um, I think that from the since the beginning of this year, in February, January or February of, of this year, Microsoft provided a patch that is still under review for Grab2 that is providing a, a, a framework based on something that they call key protectors. And these key protectors, together with some CLI, are going to uh, uh, unseal or, or, or uh, decrypt certain passwords that later can be used for the for the mount process. One of the key protectors that they are providing is based on TPN2. That is a crypto, crypto chip that uh, later we are going to see like one or two words that is helping a lot uh, in order to provide more security and more uh, 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 um, validation uh, 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 before uh, opening the crypto device. Um, the problem is that this patch is not complete. It's like one step in a long chain of requirement. Uh, for that, there is something, uh, uh, one, one, element that we need to provide as a distributor is how to encrypt or seal this secret. In the case of uh, OpenSUSE or SUSE, we are providing this PCR oracle. This is a tool that we make here to uh, 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 predict the value of certain register and, and seal some secret that are going later to be used by this patch and open the device. Uh, 
But again, there are many more patches in Grab that are going to be required to uh, basically cover all the use case and, and close all the holes that uh, uh, an approach based on group two, Grab2 two is going to, to, to require. And also we need to remember that this is a long standing issue that the partial of, uh, uh, so the, the support of Lux2 in Grab is kind of partial. Maybe it's not a big deal, but the support of uh, 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 key generators, so key, uh, how to generate a key in a secure way, way is going to be, um, I mean, we are for Lux2, we are not going to use the one that is recommended, that is Argon2. In system D, the approach is completely different. So uh, it's a starting based on some specification or so, some uh, uh, document that are uh, trying to become some kind of a standard or reference uh, document. So we have the bootload specification, the discovery partition specification, that basically what is going to tell us is uh, what target or what is the, the, the use case of for several partitions. And system D is going to discover that and is going to mount and doing the right thing. So it's going to be everything more declarative. It's going to provide a tool for measuring and, and predict the value of shift set in PCR. Uh, they are going also to, to, to sign those policies that is going to be very cool later. Uh, there is another tool for, for uh, opening the crypto, uh, crypt, uh, the crypto device. Uh, there are uh, adapters for uh, opening the embedded and the integrity devices. So it's a tool set uh, 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 more complete and more uh, ubiquitous for, for, for this case um, because it's a, uh, it's a user space, uh, basically it's a user space uh, tool. The, the support for Lux2 is going to be more, more complete. So uh, we have previous arts. I mean, for OpenSUSE, we already know how this is working. There is a full description in OpenSUSE. Basically, this is the, the architecture. So we can see that today is, is using Lux2 based on butter FS. And, and in the boot chain, we can see that Grab2 is going to ask for the password before showing the menu entry. After that, once that we provide the, the password, is going to be able to, to, to mount boot that in this case is going to be fully encrypted. Um, can show the menu entry and after that can, depending of the user interaction, it's going to load the kernel init RD that are going to be on the boot process. Because init RD is happening after the, so the, the kernel really doesn't know the password that we introduce to, to grab in this model. Init RD is going to ask again a second time for the password and now using that could come to the switch root and, and, and complete the, the boot process. There are more alternatives. If you go to the documentation, you can see that the second password uh, can be resolved. You can provide a key. Um, you can enroll a second key, and you can put this key in ITRD, and you are in your root uh, file system. So anytime that the initRD is going to be re recreated, the key is also be, is going to be introduced in ITRD. So the, the, the password is not going to be asked two times. And there is also a, a very nice patch from Michael Chang in group two that is, uh, is going to be able to put the, the, the secret as part of the init RD in the run FS. So the secret is never in the, in the disk, is put by grab2 in, in init, RD, init RD without storing the secret. So it's kind of cool and it's going to be mostly ready to be used. But there are more approach for OpenSUSE. I mean, before entering on that, I, I want to, to say two words about measure boot and TPM. So, uh, in case that you want to know more, please review some of the talk that Fabian did for full disencryption last year, and I did also for remote attestation, where there is a more broad coverage of about TPM2. But TPM2 have this kind of nice feature that is measure boot, that is a process where each step in the boot chain, before delegating the action to the next stage, is going to read the code or the data, and it's going to calculate the hash of, uh, of the next stage. And it's going to use a, a cryptographic operation that is called extend, that is very easy to, to calculate, but very hard to revert. That is going to be applied to one of those PCR registers that the TPN have. And after that, it's going to, to, to jump into the next stage. Uh, the key point here, or the, 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 the general strategy here is that each stage is going to measure the next one. So that means that in the future, the system can make assertion about the health of the system because the value of a PCR is going to be such only in case that all the previous hashes are uh, 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 
like the one that you expect and they are measured in the same order. So the extension that needs to happen in the same order with the same values. If something changed, the, the final hash of the PCR is going to be completely uh, uh, different. So you make a session about the health of, of your system. And uh, using that, you can also seal or unseal uh, secrets. So imagine that you have a password in the boot chain. In that case, we have one for uh, unlocking looks. We can seal this secret based on a policy. A policy basically is an expression that can be very, very complicated that can do stuff like, okay, you, you are going to unseal this secret only in case that the user put this password, like a pin entry or a, a value of the value of this PCR is going to be exactly this one, or the value of this policy match this signature, something like that. You can put or and ands and make complicated expression as, as you wish. Uh, the key point here is that the seal secret that is stored in your system can only be opened by the exactly this TPN in case that the, the, the policy match. So that means that if you remove the secret and you put in a different TPN, even if the uh, policy match, it's, the, it's not going to be possible to, to open the, the, the secret. And for that, there is like a prototype also in OpenSUSE that is showing, uh, only showing, a very cumbersome and manual process where we can use systemd in order to uh, uh, unlock uh, the, the, the device with certain restrictions. For example, one of the restrictions is that upgrade or, or rollback is not taken into consideration. But the key features are, are shown here. So for example, we can see that in this case, a boot is going to be unencrypted. In this case, uh, can live in BattleFS, but can live also in X4 or whatever you want. And uh, USR and ETC and bar is going to be part of the encrypted device. But one nice feature is that the condition to unencrypt or to unseal the secret is going to be based on a very long chain of mature stage in the boot process. So you are going to unencrypt the secret only if the kernel, the initRD, grab, and the firmware is in, the, in, in a good known state by the user. So is this situation or this, this approach, at least the original one, is meeting the criteria? I think that mostly, uh, mostly yes. I mean, in the case of the storage device has been lost, there is no way to unencrypt anything or to access of the of the data. Uh, we need to remember that this grab who is opening the the the, uh, the kernel and the init are the device. So before that. Uh, is asking the password to us, so there is no way to 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 access to the to the system. The same case in in, in case that the dev food device has been installed, so I can't change the 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 kernel command line, or I have any entry point because I really don't know the password that is going to be required before uh, accessing to the kernel. Is protecting about tampering? I think maybe. I mean, maybe it can 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 protect. Uh, uh. There is no per se data authentication in this approach, but if we are using BatterFS in a cocao device, the metadata in the cocao is uh, in the cow uh, device is going to be also uh, encrypted. That means that when BatterFS is going to read a file and the CRC or the metadata is not matching, it's going to do a IO error. So yeah, there is some kind of that authentication. But as far as I'm aware, this is not protecting about any role but action. So uh, it's based on a password. So that means that I technically can rewrite the device, providing a different or an old version of the kernel. I, I can make exploit later. But it's kind of OK. So it's mostly uh, working on all the points. Uh, for ALP, we are using, I mean, Olaf Kirch is using a, a, another approach that was described uh, before that is taking advantage of the, the, the patches that we have for, for that Microsoft provide for, for, for Grab and using all the uh, key protector framework in order to use the TPN2. Uh, before unencrypting the or opening the, the the boot. So in that regard, it's kind of similar how uh, uh, the traditional uh, um, put this encryption is working in OpenSUSE, but now using beside beside that the TPN2. So we can see that uh, the the boot process is going to be very similar. So the boot is going to be also encrypted, the same for for USR and ETC, and because it's Crap2 who is opening the, the, the menu entry, 
so the device that is going to have the menu entry and the kernel, the, the area that is going to be measured by the TPN2 during the measure boot is going to reach until grab2. But all the firmware grab2 as some of the data that grab2 is going to read is going to be measured. So after that is something match the TPN2 is going to be able, so based on the, on the policies that we are, we are going to apply, is going to be able or not to unseal the, the secret that is going to open the looks to device and continue the boot process. Um, as commented, is using this uh, grab protect, or you can use, I mean, it's not using today, but one option that you have for grab2 is that you can use grab today, grab protect in order to seal the secret based on the current status of the different PCR. But there is a much better option with PCR, PCR Oracle, where you can predict the, the, the PCR values uh, using some technique where you are storing the PCR values in some FE uh, variables inside the, the inside FE that you can, so the, it's stored before uh, grab is doing the measurement and after that you can compare the other status of the current one. So it's a, you have the information in order to make the prediction. Uh, there are other ways of doing that, maybe checking the event log, but this is already provided as a patch inside the in, in, inside grab. How to recover is a, so the process for recovering in case that, I don't know, the, the TPN prediction was wrong or you update the firmware and you were not aware of that. So it's something that you need to decide how to do that. Maybe you can have like, a, a, you can register a secondary key and provide a, a USB stick that is it's going to be able to boot a, the system and you now you can, you can provide a secondary key. The current patch from Microsoft is not supporting PCR, Signet PCR or, or a, 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 a policy authorization in TPM. It's not providing the signature of, of, of PCR. This is kind of a bad damage, but I think that this is something that can be done working with upstream. So it's a, we can extend the, tip, the, the TPM patch in order to, uh, instead of expect a fixed value of the PCR, you are going to provide uh, the PCR value in a different file that is going to be signed by a, a public key that the TPN is going to uh, validate. And if the public key matches signature of this file, it's going to use the PCR value in, inside the policy instead of the one that is used for sealing the secret. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, I commented the this portion that can be measured is going to be smaller than expected. So it's not the full chain of the boot process, but you are going to have all the system PCR measurement and partially, partially the one that uh, Grab is doing that basically is, uh, in this case is we are using PCR uh, uh, nine that is the configuration file uh, that Grab is going to read before un unsealing the, the, the device. For the evaluation, I mean, it's meeting the criteria. That is, uh, can be a bit, a bit more hard to tell. I mean, I think that it's very clear that if the, in case that the storage has been lost or stolen, this is not going to be possible to decrypt. So it's doing the right thing. The TPN is not attached, attached to the device. So that means that there is no option to open that in a different device. But if the full, if I have a laptop with this system, can, uh, and I lost the laptop, can be open uh, by default, yes. I mean, we need to remember that the kernel, kernel command line and the init are not measured anywhere. So that means that if we are using grab at it is, we are going to be able to change the grab command line and continue with the boot process because we are using the TPM from the, from the system. One solution for that is to have a version of grab that is going to be impossible to edit the kernel command line. I'm not sure if this makes sense for a laptop, but I mean, it's an option. So it's certainly there. There is a offline data tampering. I mean, I think that mostly, yes. I mean, no, it's not explicit, but ButterFS is, again, for the cow uh, volumes or sub volumes, is going to do mostly the right thing. The, the metadata is going to be encrypted. So that means that if you change one block without changing the metadata associate, and both are going to be encrypted, you are going to have the, the IO error later, later on in the process. So yeah, it's true that if you are doing that for a database that is living in a bar, no. But for the system, yeah, mostly yes. Offline data tampering, I think that there is no protection in the same sense that we don't have that in OpenSUSE. I mean, it, maybe something that we can implement that for today, there is no, no clear path about how to avoid the rollback. So maybe another solution is completely uh, forbid the, the rollback in the same way that we forbid the editing of the kernel command line. 
and maybe for micro I mean, this is a proposal. This is a, an idea and how we think in the team that we need to address the problem for micro That is, in that case, using systemd. So remember, we have systemd or the systemd community or some community around there that want uh, provide. They want to provide a image-based Linux distribution. They want to address the problem of a. a Full this encryption. So that means that for them, they, they have like a different kind of tool available for them. That is the embedded unified kernel image. That is something that maybe we can add that or think about if it makes sense for micro -S. They have some kind of specification, specification that we need to remember that they are still open. So this, this specification for us is going to be possible to create a pull request and, and, and uh, be very clear that our demand has several other cases that should be uh, addressed. And they are very explicit about using secure boot. Secure boot is not, not going to be optional, so it's going to be there. And it's the same for us. So for ALP, secure boot is going to be there. Something very nice, in my opinion, I mean, I didn't like at the beginning, but I think that it's pretty cool. They, they are going to take ownership of several PCR. So PCR 11 and 12, there is not a very explicit use case. There is not a standard process about taking ownership of different PCR, but they are going to use PCR 11 to measure the, the unified kernel image. So that means that the prediction of the final PCR is going to be very simple because the extension comes from zero. So zero extended with the hash of this uh, file is going to be the new value of the PCR in any system. So that means that a third party or the pro OS pro vendor or provider can provide a signet policy that is going to work in any system outside. And the secret is only going to be unsealed locally. So because uh, if, the, if the signature match is going to be, it can only be unsealed, uh, unsealed locally. Um, and they have, uh, in the roadmap, they have features that we really need. Like, for example, the, the use of TPN2 counters or clocks, but in that case, it's going to be counters, that is going to be inside the, poly, the signet policy, that is going to avoid the rollback problem. So there is a very clear approach about how to uh, uh, say, OK, from this moment, uh, from, from today until the set time counters, there is not possible way of doing a rollback. And this window can be decided by the OS vendor. So that means that if we have a kernel that we know that was unsecure, we can mark this as a milestone, as a point, and complete it for it, the, the rollback uh, uh, that is going to use this uh, kernel. And the architecture that we, we are proposing uh, is kind of different. So we can see that in that case, again, the bootloader is going to be unencrypted, but it's going to be measured. And for USR, the proposal here is to have a clean USR. I mean, the, this is completely optional. Uh, it's not forced for this architecture, but I think that the correct approach here, or we think that one correct approach here is to use a DM integrity with an unencrypted USR. If not, if this is not a solution, you can put that inside the Lux2 uh, device. But we, we want to use Lux2 together with uh, uh, an explicit data integrity. That is the AD, AEAD uh, family of uh, hashes that looks to is providing since, I think, 218 or something like that. That diff storage is also providing. So there is a, now an option in diff storage that is going to be to create this kind of, of device. So in this model, because it's based on system D, we have the full boot chain measure. So you have from the firmware to, to including the, the init RD, so everything in between is going to be measured. And you can create policies. In, we hope that we are going to use a signet PCR policies. If not, they are locally created and we can move on. That is going to unseal the, the, the secret of one of the look slots, one of the slots of the looks header that is going to open the, 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 the crypto device. Um, so yes, this is basically the, the big feature. So the, the, there is the measure boot is going to be complete. Everything is going to be measured, including the kernel command line. This is kind of cool because also system D or this approach is going to provide an alternative for different kernel command line that, that they are going to be supported. So this is not about supporting one single kernel command line. So there is going to be an or, or, or policy that is going to say, okay, you can do that for the kernel command line, but these other two options, are going to be uh, okay if you if you boot. If, so that means that I can do I I can't I, or I can forbid the replacement and instead of initially, I'm going to use bash to open the, 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 
So this kind of attack is out of question. Uh, I think that is kind of nice that you have this sys uh, extension tool that can be used to enrich uh, initRD and provide secrets and confident drivers. This is a word that exists. So drivers that are you don't want to be leaked outside. So with uh, ST system DC extension, you are going to provide secrets inside uh, initRD. We need to remember that initRD can be locally created or, provide, or static uh, in ITRD that can be de delivered by, by SUSE, but they are going to be unencrypted. So you need a way in certain situation to provide secret, and there is a channel for that. Uh, all the layout is going to be declarative and auto discover. That means that if we are not happy with the layout in our system, we can change that without providing patches or code for doing that. It's a matter because it's going to be auto discover, there is a good chance that uh, is going to simply work. We talk about the PCR, the Signet PCR, that is kind of cool. I think that the really good advantage is that it's providing a very clear path about rollbacks. So you don't need to reseal again the, the, the secret in the looks to header in order to do a rollback. You are using exactly the same secret. What you are providing, and it's something that can be the, in the snapshot, is the uh, policy signet uh, using a valid uh, private key. So it's the kind of mostly done. And you have full data authentication. So everything is going to be uh, authenticated in one way or in another. So uh, yeah, more features. is uh, Because upstream is providing this kind of PC, a signet PCR, and that means that uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is delivered in a JSON document. This is kind of cool because that means that you are not forced to use the tool assistant is provided if you don't want. Uh, you can use your own tool or uh, contribute upstream to change system D measure in order to sign the, the instead the unified kernel to sign the asset that, that you want to, to evaluate. Uh, I need to say that this is also in the to-do. So upstream is completely, in that case system is completely open to, to provide this feature. If they are only waiting to someone to do that. Uh, something that I really love is that no local patches, no downstream patches. So uh, the, I, I need to consider that the, I mean, the grab to amount of patches that we have that eventually they are never going to be upstream I mean, maybe because they are not relevant or because they are very ad hoc or simply because a string is, uh, yeah, can be a bit picky, uh, is huge. I mean, the amount of patches is really huge. With this ND, we have the chance of have seen on local patches. So that means everything, the prediction, the, the, signa, the signature, the unlock, everything is going to be a, a upstream, including a mechanism for doing the rollback and, and uh, for forbidding rollback until certain periods, so everything upstream. So less work for us, at least for, for the system D maintainer. This is working. I think that mostly, yes. I mean, obviously, local, uh, if the local device has been stored, uh, stored or lost, this is going to work like in the rest of the system. There is no way to open that. The same for the laptop. So uh, 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 in the case of the laptop, uh, uh, if you are using a secondary key, like for example, a FIDO key, you can have policies that express the condition that also the user need to provide a PIN or a FIDO key uh, 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 device. So that means that in the laptop, that is where it makes sense this uh, user interaction. There is no way to, to, to continue the, the boot process without this key. Uh, that, uh, that authentication, I think that is very explicit. So again, we have uh, uh, DM integrity, we have measure boot for the unencrypted part or for the part, part of the initar DM kernel and the kernel command line. And we have uh, looks to without authentication uh, in the rest of the system. So it's explicitly there. So it's not implicit because of interface, but it's there because for, for definition. And rollback, I think that today, no. The, there is no rubber protection, but it's in the roadmap again. So we are going to use this counter to fix the, 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 the rollback problem. So this is why it's a kind of yellow face. Closing. Hmm. I think that maybe at the end it's not really, really relevant if we are going to use grab2 or, or, or systemd. If we decide to go to the grab2 path, I mean, maybe we need to become upstream in grab2. I mean, this is 
not a joke. I mean, I discussed that recently, and I think that kind of makes sense. So, uh, Grab2 patches are massive, and including certain patches from Grab2 is kind of very hard. For example, one patch that we have that I recently learned that never is going to be upstream is this one. So let me go back in the slide. So one point here is that the bootloader is not going to be Grab2, or not necessarily is going to be Grab2. In this architecture that we propose for MicroS, you can use another bootloader that is going to follow the bootloader specification. The problem is that the different patches that we have for Grab2 no one is going to be accepted. I learned that there are two patches, one from Leonard Potter in itself, that was very fast, no. And there is a second one from Fedora that I learned recently that also is not going to be upstream. So that means that if we go to this path and we are going to use Grab for the first prototype, uh, we need to maintain a downstream patch uh, for us, or maybe there is a hero outside that is going to provide the perfect patch for Grab too. Uh, so anyway, my point is that there is going to be a less of work for us if we uh, uh, go for a more standard uh, solution. And I think that there is a window of, of opportunity here. It's recently where different companies and open source projects uh, are collaborating and they are uh, uh, being very vocal and explicit uh, in creating standards and proposal about how to work together in a, a solution that is going also to cover the full disencryption. And I think that is an opportunity for SUSE, for my team and for the rest of the team, that is uh, be very active and engage in those upstream country, uh, discussions and, and start, uh, yeah, be very explicit that, okay, for sub volume, we need this kind of naming, uh, for rollback, we need this kind of approach, and for battery phase, we need this kind of, I don't know, the uh, extension in the, in the standard. So this is the, how I see this uh, uh, full disencryption problem, that opportunity to cooperate with uh, more communities. And okay, we have five minutes for questions, if there is one, because that's Thank all you, from Alberto. that side. Thank you. Questions? So there is a question. And so are there, for... yes, are there any plans on adopting BLS for ALP? I mean, I I think that no. I mean, for ALP, no. I think that this is a, a the target is micro A. So this is for, for micro S first. So let's experiment there, the, let's break the distribution and let's put BLS and try to provide a solution for BLS in, in micro S. So in micro S, yes. please. Yeah, hi. So um, I'd like to comment on, on some of the things that, that Alberto mentioned here. I think one pretty important distinction that we need to make is um, the, the micro OS approach that is, is suggested, proposed here, um, because it actually needs to measure a much longer chain before it decrypts the secret that we need to access the looks volume, um, there are a lot more moving parts, right? So that means ev essentially it means um, you have to somehow authorize every combination of kernel and init RD that you that you want to use on the system. And this is where, where these signed policies come in. And that's one of the reasons why for ALP we took a different approach where we basically said um, everything we want to protect is inside the encrypted volume. So all we need to do is bridge the much shorter gap, which essentially consists of, of the shimloader grub and the initial grub.config file. Of course, as, as Alberto correctly points out, there are a few things that you, uh, some additional pain that you incur um, as part of that. For instance, you have to, fiddle around with, okay, how do you prevent the user from doing nasty stuff by modifying the kernel command line? Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's not much different from preventing the user from doing bad stuff um, with the 
basically UEFI boot variables. It's probably a pretty similar approach. Um, so overall, I still believe um, that by putting the TPM unseal very late in the game, you're actually increasing the, the complexity and the of the management of the whole situ situation quite a bit, which is why that makes me a bit uncomfortable, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if I want to comment, if I can comment on that, I think that the point is not exactly that. I mean, for me, I mean, I'm no security expert, so I can be wrong, but the, the bigger the area of the boot chain is measured, the mere security, because this is the cornerstone of the measure boot process. So uh, why to use measure boot in that case? So you want to, to be sure that the health of your system is as long, I mean, is attested as far as possible. In that case, that means for Linux, that means until the init RD, but with IMA, you can even go further. So that means that uh, uh, you can have the full system measure. Uh, that's on one point. I mean, I think that is a, a fair point that this is more moving part. I think this is, yeah, this is true. But I, I don't perceive that as a, a like a, like a core problem. I think that this is a technical problem. For example, a certain distribution they are going to use the unified kernels in order to address this problem of uh, initrd kernel and initrd combination. But if you are using a boot light, the bootloader specification, it's very clear the amount of combination that are going to be possible. So the combination between the kernel, the kernel command line, the initrd, and the root file system are going to be enumerated. So that means that you can make predictions on that or you can calculate the PCR locally because the, the, the set is going to be finite. And yeah, I mean, there is a technical problem that there is a technical solution. I am, I don't have the word to say that this is going to fly or not. I have the feeling that yes, but yeah, that is why Micros is here to, to make experiments. So another question is why having two different layouts? I mean, because we are in an influx. I think that we are in a in this moment where everything is pivoting from one system to maybe another. So we need to move forward. So basically the uh, grab uh, for certain scenarios can't be used. And the, in my opinion, and this is in my opinion, the architecture proposal for grab is very constrained. So I think that uh, uh, we should uh, uh, do in the path by doing that. So uh, let's try to put this new model that is ongoing in micro S, let's start being very vocal about the problem that we found and contribute on that. Because I'm pretty sure that in one, two years, more distribution are going to use that. Because today is like a jungle. I mean, uh, every distribution is, is, is using very different uh, uh, approaches without really a, a formal validation on that. And, and, and no one is very happy to the, with the full disencryption solution that they have if they have one. So yeah, this is what no, this was more the, the layout was more regarding the BLS scenario. I mean, um, the proposal for using this, the boot standard has been around for years now. I, I guess it was eight years ago when you proposed it initially. So it's hardly a new concept. Um, nevertheless, it didn't really catch on because that's one of the things which is really, 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 really hard to change. Once the partition is done, the partition is, is done and will stay for the lifetime of that computer or that installation. So, and um, I mean, I did some experiments back in them days and found that's actually quite easy to, to modify even for our layout, layout if we manage to move it one side down, because that's really what this amounts to. We essentially have to add another level um, of uh, basically, basically another um, directory where we store our kernels in. So storing the kernel slash directly under, under slash boot is not going to fly. But if, why can't we just start by doing it now? I mean, out is a new concept. So what do we lose if trying to attempt or not trying to attempt rather? I mean, maybe there are time constraints. I mean, ARP is something that we need to deliver in micro S. I think that is the proper place to to make validation, but I can be wrong. Yeah, so if I can jump in real quick, I mean, certainly it was time, time was the issue. I mean, we barely managed to finish the FTE proof of concept that we have today um, for the first prototype. Um, there are a few gaps that need to be addressed next. And if 
if BLS is something that a lot of people tell me we should be looking into, um, then we'll certainly do this. Um, so far, well, my we already have identified um, some use cases where, Grub, where we can't use Grub. Full stop. Because of external restrictions. Yeah. Okay. And um, nailing ourselves down for all with Grub will exclude these use cases. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure whether we really need BLS for that to actually handle in another bootloader, but yeah. 